You've heard that market research is important. Talk to your customers, talk to your customers, but what does that mean? And what the heck are you supposed to do with that information? In this video, I'm going to share my tried and true system for gathering, organizing, and using market research, plus the ChatGPT prompt I use to sort through hundreds of responses in minutes. Market research is a really important part of having any business, but especially an online business. As online business owners, our customers are far and wide all over the world, and that's a huge, huge plus. But it also means that we don't get the benefit of in-person, face-to-face connection. Yes, sales calls, consult calls, discovery calls, whatever you call them can do a lot. But in order to get people on those calls, our copy needs to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. The best copy is which that which speaks directly to those customers customers in the very words they actually use to describe their problems, their desires, their desired solutions, and objections. But as online business owners, we have to work a little harder to get access to those actual words, but it's effort that pays off. It not only makes our copy resonate more with the people who we want to be speaking to, but it also makes writing that copy much, much quicker and easier too. No more staring at a blinking cursor in a Word doc trying to conjure up the perfect copy. I'm a believer that there's no copy you could write, I could write, that's going to be more powerful than the words your customers are already using. And so I've designed a system for gathering and organizing that information that I'm going to be sharing with you in this video. The first step is how to gather your customer created copy sources. The first phase of the system is to go and find that information so that we have our raw material to start working with. If you have an audience already, the best way to do that is by sending a survey. So I like to send usually some variation of these five questions. So number one, what frustrates you the most when it comes to your topic area? Number two, what have you tried in the past to fix this problem that did not work, right? Very, very valuable information for you. Third, if you could wave a magic wand, what results would you have from topic area? Number four, how would you feel if the topic area frustration disappeared and you were able to get these results? And number five, if you could ask me anything about this topic, what would you ask? I also like to have a prize draw from those who complete the survey as a fun incentive. I usually keep the survey open for one to two weeks with a few reminder emails to complete it or PSs in my regular email. If you don't have an audience large enough for a survey, that doesn't mean you can't do this. You can alternatively gather third party snippets from stuff like Amazon book reviews in any of the books related to your field. You can search for keywords in different Facebook groups or on Reddit or different channels like that. You can grab, grab testimonials from customers of other businesses in your niche, where they're talking about that specific problem or the results they got or the goal or the feelings they have from it. The goal here is to capture their words verbatim. So set up a spreadsheet and get ready for a ton of copying and pasting. I would say the aim is to have at least 100 snippets or answers in our spreadsheet. So if you're using the survey method and asking all five of those questions or some variations of them, you want to have hundred answers. So you'll want 20 people minimum to have completed the survey since 20 people times five questions each or equals 100 answers total. The second thing we have to do is use ChatGPT to organize that market research. So most survey tools let you export responses in a CSV format. What I personally do at this stage is move them all into a Google sheet with at least two tabs. Um, it can grow from there. Tab one is where I keep all of my organized answers. I create four columns, goals and desires, problems and pains, desired solutions and objections or excuses. Tab two is where I put all my raw data and incoming data from the surveys or from my third party sources. I use ChatGPT to do the initial sort of the answers into these four columns. And although it isn't perfect, it does a really great job. So I'm just left fixing a few. Here's my prompt. Hello, ChatGPT. I need you to act as an experienced marketer and organize these survey responses into a table with four columns, goals and desires, problems and pains, desired solutions and objections as column titles for the table. Then organize snippets from the survey responses into the appropriate column based on the sentiment. Make sure to fully review the uploaded information to determine which column it belongs under. You must use all four 
four columns of the table, so you will need to make a judgment about which content belongs under which heading. Do not change or rewrite the content of the survey responses, but use as much of the original response as possible. This is important. It's important that there are no empty cells in the table, so please make sure that as you fill each row, enter data and do not use NAN values. Please do this for the entire set of data provided. I've also put this prompt in the description so that you can copy and paste it for yourself to test it out. So let me share my screen and I'll show you how to use this prompt. Once you have your survey responses, you'll want to organize them into a spreadsheet. So as you can see here, what I've done is even though I had multiple questions in my survey and it put everything when I exported it from Google Forms, it had them all, all of the responses in individual columns to the whatever question it happened to be. What I've done is I've put them all into one column here, all of the responses. That's going to make it easier for Google, um, for ChatGPT to find the data and work with the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the name of the spreadsheet and then come over to ChatGPT. I've already copied it in my prompt, but now I just need to add the folder, add the data that it's going to work with. So I'm going to go here to attach file, go add from Google Drive, and I'm going to search for my file name here. Then I'm going to upload it, have my prompt already. And as soon as that's finished uploading, I'm going to click enter. Now you're gonna watch it do a bunch of Python, a bunch of pandas and whatever it is that it's doing. Um, as it figures this out, it takes usually like less than a minute, um, but what it'll do is it'll export it all into a table. So we're just gonna wait for that to happen, finish happening. Perfect. So as you can see here, what it has done is it has organized all of the snippets here, all of the responses into your columns here. So your goals and desires, your problems and pains, desired solutions and objections, there are some empty things here, right? So ideally we would have all of the goals and desires listed right here and then the problems and pains. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of organization. So you'll want to come here and download the table, then upload it into your Google Drive and you're going to want to open it as a Google Sheet. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So once I've uploaded it to Google Drive, I opened it as a Google Sheet by right clicking. And as you can see here, I have lots of responses here. Um, and again, you might need to go through these. So Cat ChatGPT by you know isn't perfect by any means, but it at least gets you a really good head start here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy all of these, and I'm going to bring them over here, and I'm going to paste them into my columns. Then I'm going to select this row. I'm going to go door uh, data sort, and then advanced sorting options. Data has header rows, and I'm going to sort by A to Z. Um, there are, let's see, let's do it by sort range and actually we'll do it individually. So goals and desires will come through and we'll sort this one. Actually, that's already done. Then we'll come to B and we'll sort data has header row A to Z and then we'll come to C, column C, data has header row A to Z and then our objections here. So sort and there we go. So as you can see here, a lot of this is what they are. Like there's a lot more objections. So you'll probably, what's nice is you'll just need to go really through this column here and make sure to put it in the right place. So I've gone through and I've finished sorting it. Um, so it's all ready to go here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the survey so that way I can put my organized ideas. Um, so I'm going to call this my messaging matrix. That's what I call it. And then what I'm going to do here is, as you can see, I can now add other prompts into ChatGPT. Like, let me show you, for example, here. Um, add from Google Docs and I'll search it. Now I'm going to say, can you help me come up with 10 headlines? Headlines pulling from the goals and desires column in the attached table. And then you can get more specific with it, of course. Um, but this is going to give you some ideas about how to put these headlines together, pulling from actual copy that they're using. Um, but also, there we go, right? These are pulling exactly from the responses that my 
people polled. And then you can also do the same thing for any of the other columns. You can ask for, you know, can you come up with 10 um, paid offer ideas based on the desired solutions. Oop, only I could type desired solutions column in the table and I'm going to just attach it again because why not it doesn't hurt okay and once it attaches and you can use this like when you are asking it to do any copy do any kind of like writing or brainstorming for you have it pull from here and anytime you have yeah perfect these are like great ideas based on like the things that people were saying over and over again um that they wanted so it's just going to help you use people's actual words and people's actual ideas and use that to give you a huge head start when it comes to your copies when it comes to your offer ideas your freebie ideas your content ideas um, so use this in your back pocket and anytime you come across new information make sure to put it into the right column because this is going to be a reference file that you can come back to again and again the final step here, the final phase is how to use your market research. So after I've done the initial organization of my copy and convo snippets I've collected, I like to save this as a file that I can easily access and use anytime I'm looking for a content topic inspiration or need to write some copy. Some of my favorite pieces of copy, the ones that I pull really, really frequently from this file are stuff like headlines. So you can turn, find one of the goals or one of the problems and turn it into a headline. You can also upload this file again into ChatGPT or any AI software and have it grab headlines for you based on what's in the file or inspired by what's in the file. The before and after sections of sales pages, the description, one liner, or promise of your offer. So name of offer is what it is for who it's for and who want result or eliminating problem. You can also use it for ad copy and ad headlines. I like to use it for the descriptions. You can use it for opt-in page copy, sales emails, either for direct copy you can use or for the angles of those emails, the objections or what you're tackling. I really like to use it too for boring pieces of copy, stuff like meta descriptions or Pinterest descriptions where I want to focus on a particular keyword, but also give it some language that my people are searching for. The important thing here is that for incoming snippets, you have a way of organizing these into the overall um, matrix that you have for your customer research. So make sure as you're coming across new bits of information that you are pulling it into the stock and have that incoming tab ready to go so you can sort it as you go and as you come across it. Okay, so let me know in the comments, are you going to set up a customer voice system or do you have any questions about setting this up? Then if you found this video helpful, give me a like and hit subscribe to be notified when the next video drops. Until next time, happy empire building.